So you really think you'll win? Things change. Meow. Hello, welcome back to the Roll Screen Team. I'm Andrew Thomas. I'm here with fellow Batman, Christopher Johnson. Hello, everyone. And we're continuing our Bat Marathon with Batman Returns. Ah, uh, yes. Quite possibly the darkest of all the films. Yeah. It's a dark Christmas movie. Ah, uh, yeah. Fa la 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 la. Yeah. You know, Penguin Man biting noses off. Yeah. Uh, dismembered body parts. People blowing up or getting shot. You know, a family picture. Fun for the holidays. Yep. Or maybe I watch every Christmas. Hmm. Around that time, anyway. Well, makes sense. But makes sense. Want to go to the overview? Oh, <laughs> well, sure. <clears throat> Batman Returns is a 1992 superhero film based on the DC Comics character Batman. The film is the sequel to the 1989 film Batman and the second installment of Warner Brothers' initial Batman film series. Batman Returns was directed by Tim Burton, written by Daniel Waters, based off a story written by Waters and the first film's writer, Sam Hamm, and produced by Denise DeNovi and Burton. The film stars Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne and Batman alongside Danny DeVito, Michelle Pfeiffer, Christopher Walken, Michael Goff, Pat Hengel, Michael Murphy, and Vincent Chiavelli? I think so. And then, our, the synopsis. Yep. The monstrous penguin who lives in the sewers beneath Gotham joins up with the wicked, shock-headed businessman, Max Shrek, to topple the Batman once and for all. But when Shrek's timid assistant, Selina Kyle, finds out and Shrek tries to kill her, she is transformed into the sexy Catwoman. She teams up with the Penguin and Shrek to destroy Batman, but sparks fly unexpectedly when she confronts the Cape Crusader. Mm -hmm. Okay, so great in this movie. Yes. Even though he plays it a bit different, Yep. than how he did in Batman. Yep. But it still feels authentic and genuine. Yep. You know, it still feels like how it felt yeah. in yeah. the first that, film. Yeah, that, my favorite scene with, with the bat signals is my favorite part of the first of this movie. Which, it's filmed fantastically, yep. but at the same time, how did he rig everything up in Wayne Manor yeah. for the for the signal to perfectly shine into yeah. his library? Yeah, good question. And no one asked why this is a thing. Yeah, but he also we see more of Detective Bruce Wayne when he's trying to find out more about the Penguin. Yeah, which we find out. Um, Penguin may be a child killer? Yeah. <laughs> for kids. For family. Yeah, for a family picture. Fun for the holidays. Yeah, if you get this. Yep, and he, he, he has... A, and plus, we actually... He gets an upgraded bat suit. Yeah, I do like that, that suit-up scene when he gets ready for the go, get set up. So, how does he choose which bat suit he wants to put on that day? He's Bruce Wayne. He he still has a bit of selfish billionaire. True, but definitely the bat suit looks a lot more armored. Yeah, and 
looks a lot more cleaner compared to the last one. Yeah, even though I do love that one. And the symbol actually looks what it's supposed to look like. Except in the first one where it had like a couple extra little spikes at the bottom. Yeah. I don't know how they got that messed up, but they fixed it. Yeah. And plus, I do like the fact that in the bat suit, he shows a bit more character. Yeah. Even though, don't get me wrong, in the first one, he definitely showed character. I mean, he's the only man that could actively smile in the bat suit and it not look silly. Yeah. But I mean the way he looks yeah. as he strapped that bomb to one of Penguin's goons. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And of course the nice little quip he says to Catwoman during their fight. Yeah. Eat floor. High fiber. Yeah, but we see the sexual tension between him and Catwoman. Oh, yes. And him and Selena Kyle. And they're, oh, yes. They're out. They're suits. He, suits he, he sees her after her, her going nuts. He's automatically attracted to her once he meets her at Shrek's building again. Well, hey, hey, hey. Apparently, just taking off glasses is enough to say, huh, she is very attractive. <laughs> and also, um,. More proof he's the world's greatest detective because he was able to figure out, oh, Catwoman, oh, Catwoman and Selena Kyle are the same person. Yeah, in the ballroom. Yeah. Yeah, as they're having their talk and dance and they're both figuring out each other's identities. And also he's like, oh, she's trying to kill Max Shrek. Can't let that happen even though he's a villain. Yeah. But he, he's still great. Can't wait to see him in the Flash next year since they Warner Brothers moved it up. Yeah, which makes things all the more confusing based on how things are going to go with continuity. Yeah, especially with Batgirl still with him in its show coming up. But with talking about the main hero, let's go into the main villain. Mm -hmm. Danny DeVito as Oswald Cobblepot, a.k.a. The Penguin. Yep, he is a good playing creepy penguin. Yes. Creepy this is a much... Creepy and horny penguin. <laughs> it's an understatement. I mean, oof. The, yeah, the opening... The opening to Jodeci's song, Freaking You, is the... Truly explains how Penguin is acting. Mm. Every time I close my eyes... Mm. I wake up feeling so horny. <laughs> <laughs> but I do enjoy how Danny DeVito plays the penguin. Yeah. Because you can tell there's definitely something tortured about him, but everything he's gone through has truly made him a really messed up mm -hmm. individual. Mm -hmm. That's why he's been staying in the sewers and apparently was raised by penguins. Mm -hmm. And and also he decided to take over the circus he was a part of and turned it into his crime gang. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And plus, y you have to give it up for all the ways that they made him look more animalistic. Yeah. You know, the bird, the bird beak-like nose the flippers and for some reason him sometimes having you know slime coming out of his nose yep yeah. although he still gets easily been when they played by shrek and catwoman well yeah he, doing it. he is naive despite the fact this man is a bit of a mastermind yeah <laughs> but danny devito was fantastic yeah. He really was. He, you definitely get to see all the different... All the different emotions... Yeah. At a penguin in this. Yeah. D 
despite the fact he is a crazed child killer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Christmas. Yep. Yeah. And then we get to the, the femme fatale, Michelle Pfeiffer. As Selena Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman. Originally it was Annette Bidding who was cast as Catwoman for this movie, but she was pregnant. Yeah, so they decided to go with Michelle Pfeiffer, yeah. which was the perfect pick because, my God, is she perfect as Catwoman. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think her and Michael Keaton were dating at this time. Yeah, which you can definitely tell there's a gr great deal of chemistry between mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And plus... Michelle Pfeiffer really went all in on this. Mm -hmm. Because with, you know, mm -hmm. a whip being Catwoman's main weapon, besides her claws, yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer actually trained how to use a whip. Yeah. She still has the whip. And you feel sorry for Selena Kyle, especially since she starts out as a, as a secretary who doesn't get much close-ups until... She gets killed by Shrek the first time. Yeah, and goes all crazy and sexy. Yep. Yep. She even does Dandelion's that that only Vic, that only Vicky Vale scream for that opening scene where Batman has to save her from his evil clown gang. Who who? who, who well, holds that and her also falling out of a window. Yeah. Though how cats running all around you, breathing on you, licking your wounds, gives you nine lives? I say it's all mental. It's all in her head. Yeah, but she survived several gunshots and being electrocuted. Yeah. So, how do you explain that? Hmm. Well, comic books. But Michelle Pfeiffer was fantastic. Yes, you look great yeah which good lord i i can understand why they needed so many versions of that suit mm -hmm. because i could definitely see that thing ripping on a regular yeah and also you have to give it up for michelle fight for when she has her scene with penguin in his hideout she actually put a bird in her mouth yeah. A live bird, she put it in her mouth and let it fly out of her mouth. Yeah. She was that dedicated to this role. And her catwoman has a gray area because as soon as she realized what they did to Batman, she automatically changed her regrets to doing it. Well, that and also finding out, realizing that Bruce is Batman. Yeah. You know, I think that's also one of the reasons why she ends up, you know, making a face turn. Yep. Not much of a face turn because she still tries to kill Shrek at the end. But he's evil. Yep. Speaking <laughs> of Max Shrek. Ah, yes. Christopher Walken. The guy who was never mentioned in the trailers at all. I know, right? I mean, come on. It's, it's Christopher Walken. Yep. You wouldn't know that there was a third villain in this movie. Which actually ties in perfectly with Batman's whole character. Yeah. Billionaire, vigilante, and orphan. Yeah. How I never realized that until now is fantastic. Is crazy, but it's fantastic. It's sort of like the, the Lex Luthor equivalent to Gotham. Oh, yeah, because everyone is absolutely in love with Max Shrek. Call them their own personal Santa Claus. <laughs> Even though, look at this man. Mm -hmm. You can obviously tell there's something nefarious about him. Yeah, he tries to get rid of the get rid of the Gotham City mayor so he can have his own mayor. Yeah, have somebody in his pocket. Yeah, just like the Penguin, which was an homage to the '60s show where Bat where Batman and Penguin both ran for mayor. Essentially, almost every version of the Penguin has ran for some sort of public office. Mm -hmm. Seriously. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Colin Farrell, in his series, he ends up trying to run for mayor. Yeah. But it makes sense. Max Shrek is smart. Yep. Yeah. Even there. though he also gets blackmailed by the Penguin. Yep. Uh, and the... Of course, he put, he, 
Matrix named after the guy who played Count Orlock slash Nestor Rothier in the silent movie. <laughs> so, yes, another Dracula. And I do find it interesting that initially Tim Burton didn't want to have Christopher Walken in the film because Tim Burton was legitimately afraid of Christopher Walken. Mm -hmm. And I find that hilarious. But I think it makes it even more perfect that he's in this film. Yep, although he does disappear halfway for Penguin and Catwoman to team up. True, but... And then comes back again after that. True, but, I mean, it's the bat, the cat, and the bird. We gotta focus on these. And he was supposed to be Penguin's brother, too. Which... Biggest missed opportunity ever. Yeah. One of the two biggest missed opportunities in this film. Mm -hmm. That would have made the dynamic between them all the more interesting. Yeah. And at the same time, would explain why Oswald wants to kill all the firstborn children in Gotham. Yeah. Would make a whole lot more sense. Yeah. And why he picked him specifically to block me also. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. oh yeah, my brother who decided to choose my mother's maiden name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Though, with talking about one Shrek, uh, we also have to give it up for his son, Chip. <laughs> he does his best prefer walking impression. Yeah, Andrew uh, Brian Narski. Yeah. He doesn't do much, but he did. Yeah, I do like Chip, though. Yeah. I do. And the fact that he is playing a Christopher Walken-esque. Yeah. He, he is acting like Christopher Walken, talking like him. Mm -hmm. You know, it does work. It does work. I do like, you know, his interactions with Max Shrek. Yeah. And then we also get, before I have to mention, all the supporting cast, like Michael Goff. Oh, Alfred. yes. Alfred's still fantastic as always. Yep. Doing his, his one ups on Bruce by giving him cold soup, giving him fishy quas. It's vichy soise, sir. It's supposed to be cold. And, uh, and originally he was. He did buy into the Penguin Sap story until he decided to set Batman up. True. Oh. And so he decided to help Bruce out with paybacking Penguin <laughs> by revealing his true colors to all of Gotham. Yeah, because he was playing Gotham like a harp from hell. Yeah. Yeah, and he's, and he's still trying to get him with someone, especially Selena Kyle. Yeah, because... He still wants to see Bruce have a normal life when he's not, you know, being the knight. And he also gets uh, talking now. He also gets you know, gets yelled at for letting Vicky back, letting Vicky into the back cave from the previous movie. Which thank you for pointing that out. Thank you, Tim Burton, for pointing this out. Yeah. I swear. Yeah, but they're really good. And then we also have Pat Hingle back as Commissioner Gordon. Which he has a bit less to do this he only, time. He only talks to Michael Keane's Batman once. And that's after he saves him the first time from the Red tri Triangle gang. Asking where Max Shrek is. Max Shrek is. And that's their only conversation in, in the rest of the movie. Although he does try to stop the cops from shooting Batman. Yeah. And he knows Batman didn't accidentally kill the Ice Princess. You know, I wish we got to solve more of that relationship between Gordon and Batman. Yeah. And why he trusted him now. Well, I mean, after everything that happened in the first film, yeah. I think, I think, I think Batman might actually be a stand-up individual. Yeah. <laughs> Despite the fact he, you know, did kill the Joker. Yeah. And... He did blow up that one henchman of the Red Triangle gang. Uh, he blew up all Joker's henchmen. 
Um, why does he trust him again? <laughs> yeah, thank you for thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about it, maybe he should trust him. But uh, he did well. But Batman is saving Gotham. He's doing this for Gotham. Because he knows no one else can. He's doing it because only he's capable. Which is something we didn't get to point out in the first review. Yeah. That I love that he explains why he does it. Because he knows no one else can. Yeah. And, of course, we also got a couple cameos for the good. Like Jane Hooks from SNL. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh... We also got Doug Jones as he's one of the clowns that helps sabotage in Batman's Batmobile, mm -hmm. which, hey, Doug Jones is great. I mean, we've seen this man as a fish man that falls in love with a mute woman. Mm -hmm. We've seen him as a fish man that hangs out with Hellboy. Mm -hmm. We've seen him as a villain in the Arrowverse. Mm -hmm. Doug Jones is awesome. Uh, and also, playing Tucker Cobblepot, Paul Rubens. But I think you all know him as Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, Pee did good for, for not having a, any lines in this, in the opening teaser. I know, I know. Although he does reprise his role, sort of, in the multiverse in Gotham. Yeah, yeah, he still is um, Tucker Cobblepot. Although he's much more sympathetic and Oswald doesn't want him dead for, for throwing him out in that universe compared to this one. Here he probably wishes that they were so alive so he could kill him himself. Well, I mean... <laughs> well, yeah... He's they really shouldn't have just decided, yeah, let's just drown the baby. After him eating the cat. I mean, that would mess you up. I mean, your your child is half man, half penguin, and he just ate a cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would mess you up, but why are you just going to throw him in the river? On well, probably Christmas Eve. Adoption agency or something, you know, you, you you really had to throw him in the river for him to end up in the sewers, where he ends up at the zoo with all these penguins. Yep, and somehow finds a circus. Uh, yeah, a traveling circus where he's, you know, one of the various things spectators can look at with awe and disgust. And try to kill kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, how was Tim Burton trying to make this guy sympathetic again? <laughs> yeah. But I, I understand there are some elements of Penguin being mistreated that I can understand that there can be some level of sympathy, but he is still trying to murder children. Mm -hmm. He's blackmailing people. I mean, that guy did deserve getting his nose bit. Yeah. He did deserve that. Uh, and also, Penguin being creepily horny. Mm -hmm. Especially for when he's running for mayor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then trying to kill Catwoman when Catwoman's like, nah, I ain't into you. <laughs> so, once again, I ask, how is this man supposed to be sympathetic? Doing your epiphanies today. There, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things of course, to question. Have, of course, the score has gotten better. Oh, yeah. Even more dynamic. Danny Elfman was on his A-game. For yeah. this. Especially with all the Christmas stuff. And then the Batmobile got a whole upgrade also. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Much more easier to maneuver. And also, Bruce decided to put a little pod in, you know, when the Batmobile is almost about to crash. And there's also the, the Christmas settings that 
that looks cool. Yeah, that... The Christmas theme and all the snow definitely adds an extra layer to Gotham's personality in this yeah. film. I really, I really enjoy that. It's a great Christmas movie for all the family to watch. Yeah, despite, <laughs> yeah, despite the you know dismemberment, the murder, the attempted murder, um, especially of Selena more than once. <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah. Tim Burton was definitely on it, his Burton stuff for this, this. The sex stuff mentioned from Penguin. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the in... There was no way for you to miss all the in, innuendos that he was saying. Mm -hmm. Again, why are we supposed to feel sympathy for this man? Yep, but... I don't... What else? The fight scenes were awesome. Yes, especially between Batman and Catwoman, which thus proving, and I think this clip will perfectly you summarize. Be ladies, would you? The hammer of justice is unisex. Yes, the hammers of justice are unisex. Even though maybe he shouldn't have hit a woman, but at the same time, she's trying to kill him with razor sharp claws. Yeah. So, what what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Batman can't just you know it's keep not, getting stabbed. Yeah, it can't be like the '60s show where he where he just lets Batgirl take care of the woman. Yeah. Nah. This time, hammers of justice are unisex. Yep. Oh. Forgot what up that we missed for the good. Um almost every character had something to do. Yep. You know, somebody had something important to do in this whole thing. Yep. Including the the mayor, Michael Murphy. He was he was good as sort of a sympathetic mayor compared to the the, the old one in the, the first movie. And heck, even uh, Vincent Schiavelli as the organ grinder of the yeah. gang. He was the one driving that weird, um, that weird train where all the kids were in. Yep. In order to get beat up by Batman. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you end up working with a criminal. Yep. <laughs> Batman ends up taking your bones. I think we've already mentioned... The bad of Shrek not showing up midway through. Yes, the lack of Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. Uh, Batman is kind of treated as the second fiddle in this film. Yeah, but... They, it, it feels like it's mainly a Penguin and Catwoman yeah. film rather than a Batman film. Yeah. And also, uh, the other missed opportunity... Why wasn't Harvey Dent in this? Mm -hmm. This would have been the perfect film to show how Harvey Dent works as district attorney. Mm -hmm. How not just him, well, not just Bruce Wayne, but him also knowing Max Shrek is a villain. Yep. He's a bad guy. He's doing messed up stuff. Plus, this film could have also led into Harvey becoming Two-Face. Yeah. One of the biggest missed opportunities. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there would have been maybe a little bit too many characters, but you could have incorporated Harvey in this. Yeah. Anything from the what? Um, I think we kind of explained yeah. everything with the what. But you want to... Duty. Though how Selena survived electrocution is still beyond me. And who brought all those tomatoes, lettuce, and eggs to throw at the penguin when Batman reveals that the penguin has been manipulating the whole city? It's a political tradition in Gotham. But who had all <laughs> the who had all the tomatoes and lettuce? Did they, were they just, just in case if we find out this guy is no good, yeah, just keep this bag here. Oh, he's no good. 
Tomatoes, everyone, get your tomatoes. Lettuce, get your lettuce. Well, you want it through the score? Well, yeah. Why don't you go first? Um, well, given this an 8 out of 10, hmm. it's, it's still a good Christmas movie. <laughs> yes, I'm going to so much as a Christmas movie. Yeah, it, but there, there was not much other than having a relationship with Catwoman, there wasn't much in his intelligence skills, there wasn't really much connection with him and with the other villains, other than that he didn't trust them. Like I like I liked in the the first one with the dynamic between him and Joker. Well, I do say just like how Panda Red said I mean, look at him. <laughs> look at him. Does that look like a trustworthy individual? <laughs> What are, are are there a lot of people that are birds walking around, huh? And you? For me, I agree with you. I give this an eight out of ten. It is a good film, not as good as the first one. There there are some things that I think are a bit lacking. I mean, this is a Batman film and you don't really feel like Batman is the main character in this. Yeah. And we won't see Michael Keaton again until next year. Hopefully. True. Very true. But it, it still is a good film. Everyone did fantastic in it. I actually would like to see, you know, maybe Michelle Pfeiffer come back as her Catwoman yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Hopefully she gets mentioned in the Flash movie. Hopefully. Yep. I, I, well, I guess Danny DeVito can't, but yep. it would be cool to maybe see something involving him, you know? Yep. But if you disagree, go find us on Facebook, The Real Screen Team. Find us on YouTube, The Real Screen Team. Where else? Uh, you can also find us on Reddit, and you can find us on Instagram. Yep. Like, comment, subscribe, or comment. Share and definitely subscribe to our yes. YouTube channel. We're trying to get to 500. And then a thousand. And then a Patreon. And then we can, you know, upgrade our whole presentation. We can start doing some viewer suggestions and even some special, you know, videos and reviews just for Patreon. But before we go, we're not done yet. We're now go into the Joel Schumacher ones with Batman Forever. I don't know how to feel about this. For the Burton films, I'll, oh yeah, my enthusiasm. These next couple films, I, I don't know how to feel. Well, we'll discuss it later. Want to roll us out? <laughs> sure. Well, thank you all for coming. Definitely come back and watch us again. Remember to like comment, subscribe, and share. It definitely helps. Cut, print, that's a wrap. Uh -huh.